fire from the edge of the protest area at about 9 p.m., resulting in several people firing weapons in chaos for those in the park. One person tragically died at the scene. Parent Shooter was wounded. He is now at University Hospital. I'm saddened to say that we have lost a Louisvillian, Tyler Girth, to this senseless act last night. Tyler was from a St. Raphael family and a Trinity graduate. As a fellow Trinity High School graduate, I want to recognize his family and share my deep sympathies with them, the friends of the family from this act. It is really just difficult to comprehend why things like this happen. I've been in touch with Tyler's family to express my sincerest apologies and grief this event. Thankfully, no others were shot in this attack last night, but video has been posted on social media. It clearly shows the panic, the fear, and anguish among those at the scene last night, and I cannot imagine the trauma that they experienced. And whether they were there at the time of the shooting or not, I know the sadness of those who've been organizing and participating in peaceful protests for racial justice. This is absolutely not what they wanted or any of us wanted. None of us wanted to see this area of peaceful protest become a crime scene. I want again to thank the first responders who assisted the scene last night, including the Jefferson County Sheriff's deputies who came to the scene very quickly. Let's have Chief Schroeder provide an update. Chief. Thank you, Mayor Fisher. First, I want to address the clearing of the park. I know this has caused great concern and anger, but it simply had to be done given that we had a homicide in the park last night. The tents and supplies that had taken over the park created a situation that could no longer be safely handled. I do want to apologize, however, for the way those belongings were handled and removed from the park. It was not our intention to damage anything that was removed. However, many of the items were treated in a manner less than our standards. The way that property was handled has also caused concern within the community. I am deeply sorry. We will work in the future to help prevent a situation like this from occurring again. Now I want to give you an update on the homicide that occurred last night. Around 9 p.m., we were notified of the incident of a man shooting in the park. Deputies from the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office responded quickly and began treating people they identified were wounded. LMPD officers arrived within four minutes. We will now show surveillance video of what transpired. And we are waiting to see what that video is. We're not going to show it right now just in case it does show a lot of the violence um, that may have happened last night that was caught there on that surveillance video. Right now, though, they did talk about Tyler Girth. He was the victim last night of a shooting. He was 27 years old. And we heard a little bit there from the interim chief, Rob Schroeder, saying that he apologized for the way that the man who is believed to be the primary aggressor in this incident is currently in police custody at the hospital. We are conferring with the Commonwealth Attorney's Office on appropriate charges to be filed. This man had been participating in the protests since they began. And he had been arrested a couple of times over the past several weeks. He had been repeatedly asked by other members in the park to leave due to his disruptive behavior. In addition to this man, multiple other people in the park were armed at the time of the incident, and our homicide investigators are still working to identify all the parties who may have fired during the incident. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Uh, as Chief said, as part of the crime scene investigation, the tents that were put up in the park over the last few weeks have been taken down. Uh, they will not be allowed to go back up. Amy Hess, our Chief of Public Safety, will talk more about that decision. Chief Hess. Thank you, Mayor. As you just saw, and as you may have seen on social media, clearly last night we had a chaotic situation that resulted tragically in the loss of life. We made the decision early this morning that we had to clear the park of all camping and tents. 
And I want to explain that just a little bit more. As you saw in the video, we had great difficulty in seeing exactly what the situation was on the ground and seeing what we had, who was there, and what was happening. It's a safety issue at this point. Over the past several nights, what we've seen is increasingly dangerous behavior. We've seen several fistfights, but we've also seen an increasing number of weapons, which gave us concern. But all that led up to last night's activity and last night's shooting. There have been no camping signs in the park since the beginning, far beyond the time the protest started. Yet we wanted to balance the First Amendment exercise of free speech, the need to be able to come together and demand change at the same time while understanding that ordinances were in place for a reason, and it was specifically to help protect public safety. When that became out of balance, we saw a need last night to take action. And as a result, we are now following the language of Metro Government Ordinance 131.01, .01, which will be posted to the LMPD website today. And specifically, that ordinance prohibits camping paraphernalia and temporary shelters from being in the park. Again, we just felt the situation that culminated with last night's shooting has now become too dangerous to allow this type of activity, these types of items, and the overnight inhabiting of the park to occur any longer. And for that reason, we feel it's imperative for us to take action in order to preserve public safety, in order to protect lives and protect people. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Uh, Vincent, James is, Vincent James is our Chief for Community Building. He's gonna share a few thoughts with us. Chief. Thank you, Mayor. And we are all here today definitely grieved by what took place last night. Whenever a shooting takes place, and unfortunately I've had an opportunity to be around several shootings in community. It's devastating to the community. It's traumatizing to the community. And even in the fact that this was a peaceful protest, yet someone in their own mind decided to take matters into their own hands and to take life, which is unfortunate. But one of the things that I can say as a government and what I'm confident in in the work that we do, and the work that I do specifically as the chief of community building, is to build community. And it takes people to build community. When I think about these words that Dr. Martin Luther King has shared and expressed, returning violence for violence multiplies violence, adding a deeper darkness to the night that already is devoid of the stars. Because darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only love can drive out darkness. Hate cannot drive out darkness. Only hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can drive out hate. And one of the things I believe that this is the time in our community that not only do we fight for justice, but we also have for peace. And we know and recognize that there can't be just peace without justice. We are striving for that in all angles of government because we recognize that that is not only the cries of the people, but that is the right thing to do. Because what I understand that life's most persistent and urgent question is what are we doing for others? And that's what we're here to do is to serve and to be able to protect. And one of the things that I want to express, how to say, stay right when you know that things are wrong. The important thing is, is that you have a focus of a mission for justice to ta take place in our community. And so I want to encourage each and every one of you, all of our citizens, to fight for this peace, but most importantly, to fight for justice. And the way that we do that is that we come together, not turning on each other, but turning to each other. Thank you. Thank you, Chief James. Uh, as the Chief said, our entire city has been hurt by this tragedy, and we have a choice to make. Our city has shown time and time again, especially four years ago, Muhammad Ali passed away, how a city comes together with singular focus, and we did that to lift up the champ, send him home. 
that's within us is Louisvillians, and we see that time and time again. We cannot let one senseless act by one individual derail that dream, that vision that we have as a city. So I ask everybody to put whatever small differences we might have to the side in the big scope of us all being here and work together for the change that we want to see. We can't let this one senseless act of violence slow or halt what the peaceful protesters are demanding in our city and our country deserve and demand that we once and for all dismantle the racist systems and institutions that for far too long have denied equal rights, access, and opportunity to too many people simply because of the color of their skin. Not tolerate that here in Louisville, and I trust we will not tolerate that in the great country as well. With that, we will take some questions from the media. You put your questions in the chat room. Ask the various folks to handle them as best do so. Chief Schroeder. A man at the Kentucky Alliance press conference this morning said the alleged shooter was paid by LMPD. Do you all have any response to that allegation? First, I will just say uh, that's absurd. In the business of, of serving and protecting, as is the city government. So that question in and of itself is, we'll respond to just to say absolutely no. But Chief, you want to add any thoughts to that? I will say it's unfortunate that trust in the police has eroded to a point where we can have that conversation. Um, obviously, our officers did not, would not ever do anything of that nature. Our officers, as you saw from the response uh, of the officers that rushed into the scene to help save lives, precisely that, to help save the lives of people who are Uh, we are not naming the suspect in the shooting at this time. Uh, he is currently in custody, and our homicide investigators are uh, attempting to interview him and work with the Commonwealth attorney. We do not know that yet. So if they try to set up tents at the square, our officers will go in first and advise them that they're not allowed. Uh, if they persist, they could be charged under the metro. So we made the call last night uh, based on the safety situation we saw. Uh, we had attempted to communicate a, a, a more thorough manner for the tents to be removed. We had a breakdown in communication, and I do apologize for that. I don't have any details on that at this time. Okay, that appears like that's the questions. Uh, so thank you for joining us. We'll provide more information as it's available. Uh, okay, sympathy goes out to the family of Tyler Girth. Commitment goes out to continue the path of justice here in our Further to say that the post 